Hi everyone, in this lecture today we are going to begin our discussion on the transport layer. So we finished the application layer in the previous lecture and we are going to move on to that, to the transport layer. So what are the goals about our discussion on the transport layer? We are going to just get started with this video and then the following video we will also have further discussions about the transport layer. So our goal here is to understand the principles behind tran the transport layer services. So the different uh, transport layer services that are there are multiplexing and demultiplexing. We'll talk about reliable data transfer and a little bit about flow control and congestion control. So the internet layer, pr internet protocols, which which use these or provide these services, we will study a bunch of them that are UDP and TCP. So UDP is an example of a connectionless transport protocol, well, well TCP is an example of a connection-oriented and reliable transport protocol. We'll also talk about TCP's congestion control. So a lot of the discussion in the transport layer is going to be focused on TCP and that's a very uh, interesting topic and we'll get to that later. So this is outlined and we're going to, in this lecture, we're just going to talk about the transport layer services. So what does the transport layer do? The transport layer provides a logical connection between the end host. The most important thing to note is that the end host run all the layers of the protocol stack, starting from the application right <coughs> all the way to the physical. And the transport layer provides a logical connection between two application processes running on the different hosts. So that's a logical connection between two application processes. So what the end hosts are going to do, they're going to break the application layer messages into segments. And this is the word that we are, the terminology that we are going to use for the transport layer. They're going to make the, break each of those application layer messages into segments. And these segments are going to, pa going to be passed through the net, to the network layer. The network layer uh, is going to take care and the, uh, of transporting these segments all the way from one host to the other. And at the, at the receiver side, these segments are going to be reassembled to, into messages that have been passed to the application layer. So once again, I want to iterate that this the, tran the goal of the transport layer is to provide a logical connection. It's not a physical connection, it's a logical connection between two application processes, between application processes that run between hosts. So it's like, a single host can run multiple application processes and the goal is to provide a logical connection between application processes. Okay, So one of the major differences between the transport and the network layer, the, the transport layer provides a logical connection between processes and we'll understand this in greater detail as we move on <clears throat> with our discussion about the transport layer. The network layer on the other hand provides a logical connection between end hosts. So there's a subtle difference. In a host, there can be multiple processes that run, and the transport layer provides logical connection between those processes, while the network layer just provides logical connection between the hosts. So let's look at a household an analogy which will help us understand this concept better. So let's assume that there are 12 kids in Anne's house, and there are 12 kids in Bill's house, and Anne and uh, uh, <coughs> Bill are are responsible for carrying letters that these kids write to each other okay so this is uh, the setup so there are two, and these kids write love writing letters and they write letters to each other so here the hosts are in if you want to make a comparison the hosts are the houses okay? and the processes are the kids so in a house there can be mother multiple kids in fact there are 12 kids in each of these houses so there are multiple processes between each host now, each of these application layer messages is a letter. So each of these kids can write multiple letters. So each of those letters is an application layer message. Now, the transport protocol that's acting here is, the, is, a, is our Anne and Bill, who are responsible for collecting these letters from the kids and, <clears throat> and then handing it over to the postal service. And on the other hand, they're also responsible for, for getting the received letters and then distributing it among those kids. So that is the goal of the transport protocol. They are doing this demultiplexing and multiplexing job of form and are forming this logical connection between the different processes. Those are the kids here. So the kids just hand over the letter to and build the transport like protocol. And it's their responsibility to make sure that the kids, uh, that the, the, I'm sorry, the letters reach the other kids. What Ann and, do, do, Ann and Bill do is they just hand over the letter to the postal service. The postal service is an ex 
is equivalent to the network layer protocol. What it does is it establishes this logical connection between the two hosts, in this case the houses. So the postal service is responsible for delivering all letters between the two houses. I hope this helps you understand the difference between the transport and the network layer. So how does the <coughs> internet transport layer protocols work? There are two protocols. One, <coughs> as I said, that they are going to form this logical end-to-end -end connection. And the two protocols that we will study. One is TCP, that is uh, and that helps in congestion control, flow control, and, and is a reliable data transfer protocol. The other one is UDP, which is unreliable as well as unordered. <coughs> what the reason with uh, why we study both these protocols is UDP is unreliable and TCP is reliable. So we can understand the amount of complexity that is needed to go from an unreliable protocol, which we'll see is pretty simple, to a reliable and in-order delivery protocols such as TCP. So I would like to make sure that what are the guarantees that the transport layer does not provide? The transport layer does not provide any guarantees of delay or bandwidth. Remember that the, the, the internet is a best effort service. So they, they are naked. it has never been designed to provide any strict guarantees. It does not provide any delay guarantees, neither does it provide any bandwidth guarantees. So neither TCP nor UDP provide any of these guarantees. With this, we will end uh, this lecture. And in the next lecture, we will begin by discussing about multiplexing and demultiplexing in the transport layer. Thank you.